Hey guys, welcome back to our podcast. It's another special episode because it's December. Why not just make this month full of special, you know, holiday cheer, you know? <laughs> so today we have a very special guest with us. It's actually one of Ian's really good voice acting friends. Um, born and raised in Washington State, she started her career singing at church and performing in community theater with her mother. She was landing roles like Annie and Oliver, you know. Annie the musical and then Oliver and yeah Oliver Twist you know good old musical stuff one summer while in middle school she went down to LA and took part in acting uh in an acting summer camp while there signed up with an agent and booked a small role in Aquila and the Bee she was hooked after a few years of going back and forth she made the permanent move to Los Angeles Karina Becker is a talented actress that have voiced such roles as Dino Girl Gaku and Tornado from One Punch Man. Mm-hmm. Please let us have a fun in... Yeah, how do I say it? Let everybody have a round of applause for Miss Karina Becker. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just having fun with words today. Oh, <laughs> I, you man. know what? That's me in the booth all the time. I just came back from Thanksgiving not too long ago, and I had a session the day I got off the plane. And... Uh, I even told my director, I was like, I don't know how words are going to happen today, but I will do it somehow. And sure enough, like every line, I was like, I mean, we're We're going to do that again. No, I'm good. I'm good. (laughs) No, I mean, we're human. So it always, it's always fun having those. But also I told the studio in advance, like I do come back this day early in the morning on a flight. I can do it that day, but I'm also just coming home. And they were like, yeah, we really need it done that day though. And I'm like, okay. Okay. <laughs> Expect the jet lag to happen, you know? Mm-hmm, exactly. Expect oh, me being man. super tired. Um, I did, I, I like, so, but we got it done. We got everything that I needed to get done. <laughs> That's good. That's good. At least you got it done, but the mistakes happen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. All the time. Oh, man. So, every actor has their start, you know, starting mm-hmm. small in this giant industry. How did you get into voice acting? Um, so actually my voice acting career started when I was eight years old. Whoa. Um, I know, right? Uh, so back when I was five years old, I was the kid that told my parents, I want to be an actor. And they were dumb enough to listen. Um, <laughs> and uh, so my mom was very instrumental in the fact of, okay, you really want to be an actor? Well, let's do some community theater, get you in some classes. Let's see if you really like it. And, um, so I trained for like three years and I still really, I was like, no, how do I, can I do this as a job? And she's like, yeah, let's try and do this as a job. So I, um, I booked my first, um, actual paying role when I was eight years old. And then I also within that year, like on, in, in theater in Seattle and, um, then I also booked a voice acting gig for a pr- promotion for a video game Whoa. Um, uh, in the same year. And so that was technically my first voice acting job. Wow. What was yeah. the video game at that time? I don't remember. All <laughs> I remember that is that I had to um, do some, I was with three other girls and we were all around the ages of eight years old. And, um, like what they wanted was they they wanted us to perform this chant like it was some sort of like you know when you skip rope as a kid you yeah. usually have a chant you do with it right that's right um well they wanted it to be like that except what we were talking about was what was happening in the video game i remember saying something like the evil hellhound reared his head and in some thing this is what he said and then we're talking about like killing demons and and destroying i don't know something like that but that's what i remember from it <laughs> wow for yeah. for an eight-year-old child we're talking about slaughtering okay yeah that's that <laughs> by the way like when you get into acting as a as a kid you you pretty much become immune to all of that immediately <laughs> you have that's, to that's funny and interesting wow mm-hmm. god that's <laughs> funny yeah <laughs> oh man so, but it was just like a promotion that they were going to use at a convention. They didn't even put it, they didn't put it on TV, not on the radio, anything. It was just used at a convention at some point. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's actually really cool. Wow. Mm-hmm. Huh. 
Probably at like E3 or something. I'm thinking it was E3 because like back then E3 wasn't as big as it is now. Yeah, and plus so, it like, wasn't out to the public too. Right, it wasn't out to the public. It was just with video game de um, developers and yep. also people putting money into video games at the time. So That's right. it would have made sense because I have I never heard it like outside of when we recorded it. That makes total sense. Wow. Mm -hmm. huh. Not bad. I remember specifically they wanted me to laugh a lot because one of the other girls was like, are you going to have us laugh too? And they were like, no, we just want her. And it's because, um, especially, I'm already a high-pitched girl right now, so if you'd like think, okay, eight-year-old Karina, holy shit, she must have been super high-pitched. Like, <laughs> um, and I was, so like my laugh was extraordinarily funny. And yeah. so then they eerily put it in the background while we're doing this chant of like me laughing in the background of the chant. Oh, that's creepy, but yeah. that sounds cool at the same time. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I remember you've had a saying when you met Ian. By the way, guys, yes, Ian and I are dating. Okay, we've been dating for a while. <laughs> Get that out there because I know people will be asking about that. But. I remember you've had a saying when you met Ian, no excuses, no sorry. Can you give our listeners more in-depth in what you mean by that? Um, my in-depth version of what I mean by that, because I, I, like when you're becoming in anything, really, your goal is to get to point, uh, from point A to point B, which is, okay, if point B is to become a voice actor, what is it going to take to get there? Um, as a person like me who's dealt with everything in the book, if you come in and, and have all the excuses of, oh, I can't do this today because blah, blah, blah. Like, for example, when I, I was like, I am going to be coming in on a flight, but I still got my job done. Yeah. Like, there are really no excuses in this world because there are so many people that are going to be out there to replace you. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, the major reason why I say no sorry is because every take is valid. So um, uh, directors, their job is to direct you. So if you do a first take and they immediately go, okay, now let's do it this way. Your job is not to say, oh, I'm so sorry. No, your take was valid. They just want a different version. Yeah, that's right. No excuses, no sorry. Don't apologize for your work and don't do give excuses again. for your work. Just yeah. do it. Yeah, pretty Just much. do your work. And also giving excuses and saying sorry and all that stuff, it takes up time in the booth and time is money. Yeah, that's right. Um, and also I was told this by um, one of my mentors that if you go into the booth and you um, all of a sudden start saying sorry, excuses, excuses, excuses. So that tells the client who hired you at that point. They're, they were thinking, oh, their audition was so great. Their audition was so great. Okay, and then you come into the booth and you start giving excuses and starting saying sorry all the time. First, that gives them one thing is that they have to then babysit you. They have to then take the time to say, no, that it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Again, takes time, time equals money, don't do that. The second thing is, is that then they start thinking, oh, maybe they were bad the whole time. If they think they're bad, they might just be bad and my instincts were just off on casting them. Oh, wow. And they'll never cast you again. Wow. Yeah, so your job is like, it, it, there's always that saying, fake it till you make it. I disagree with that, kind of. Fake it till you make it doesn't mean, let's make up shit and pretend that I'm better than I am. No, it's if you're having a bad day and you walk into the booth, pretend you're not having a bad day. Yeah. Pretend that you're or that you are the greatest actor who stepped in that booth at least for that hour And then when you go home, you can then go and cry like yeah, pretty much <laughs> Like I mean like we but as actors we all do that. We all have insecurities We all like I I literally sit around with like my actor friends and I'm just like guys I'm the worst actor on the planet and all that stuff But you bet your ass I don't go in the booth and say that to my director yeah. I don't bring that in there because I'm at my job at that point my yeah, job is to do sense. the work. My job is not to sit and cry to my director. He's not my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true. It is a valid point because even like you just said right now, you know, you can you can only fake it till you make it, but you can't do it when you're actually doing the job because your right. job is to be as professional as possible along mm -hmm. with the fact that you're getting paid to do what you're known for. Right. You want to do it right. Mm-hmm. And not many people are willing to do that. Like, there's some artists, like, drawing and all that, like, 
they complain saying, I'm the worst artist. Yeah, I'll admit I complain about it too. Saying, I'm well, the worst yeah, we artist. do that privately, but when you're out there trying to make a living for it, don't do it like yeah. out there. You don't know do it mean? publicly. <laughs> yeah, don't do it publicly. Go cry in the corner or like privately, which again, like I've dealt with it too. I, I, I talk about my Twitch channel about my insecurities, like, like all that stuff, but I don't bring it in the booth. Yeah. Once I'm in the booth, that's not my place to do that. Yeah, because that's your professional zone. It's like, get in yeah. character, let's do this, get time, get money, mm -hmm. go home, cry go about home, it later. Cry <laughs> about it later. Uh, <laughs> which we've all done. <laughs> it's very human for us to do that. Mean, and another thing is that, like, I, because I've dealt with so much in my life, that anytime somebody brings an excuse to me that just doesn't sound, I don't know, valid to me, I like, don't get me wrong, everybody deals with a lot of stuff. Yeah. I am, I am understanding to a point, but when it comes down to it, if you can't get the job done, they're just going to recast you. It doesn't matter your excuse. Yeah. So but you can bring me the excuse of, oh, I just don't feel like it today. Well, guess what? I have Crohn's disease. I literally don't feel like it every day. Yeah. And so that whole, of like, and it really bothers me when people who don't have like invisible illnesses or just don't have an invisible disability or anything like that, they start complaining about certain things like that. And that's the reason they can't act. And I'm like, oh, no, that's not the reason you can't act. Yeah. Because I act every single day. I'm sick every single day. So stop that. You have to, because what's going to happen is if you come in with that excuse of, I just don't feel like it, well, guess what? You just got recast. Yeah. And that's a lot of money out the window too. Mm -hmm. So I, I tell my students all the time, I'm like, you may not like, don't get me wrong. There are legitimate excuses out there. Like my grandmother just died. Obviously go into their funeral, whatever. Go help but, your like, family. That's if important. Your excuse is like. I just don't feel like it or I'm kind of depressed and like, well, get over it. You yeah, gotta, no you gotta get in there. You gotta make money. Otherwise they're gonna, they're just yeah. gonna get rid of you. Yeah. You gotta tough it out until you pretty much get through the day. Pretty much. You have no mm -hmm. choice. And also because like, don't get like the, the industry is hardcore, but at the same time it is understanding and you want to make sure that you use the right excuse at the right time. Because if you constantly have the same excuse all the time of why you can't do your job, then you become un unreliable. Yeah. You want to really think about it, be like, okay, do I have to go to the hospital? No, then I'm going into work. <laughs> like, that's really what it comes down to. Pretty much. Like, unless you literally have no voice, you have no excuse to not get in that booth and continue to work. Wow. That's insane. Mm-hmm. Because even Ian tells me that a few times, like, you know, you, I know you have a lot of problems, but man, you gotta really just, come on. I'm like, yeah, Ugh. you gotta get it together. It's yeah. called, I mean, like, it's part of being an adult. It, it sucks, but we gotta do it. No kidding. No <laughs> kidding. I mean, it is tough adulting. It's tough adulting, but at the same time, it's kind of beneficial because that's how the world works. <laughs> mm -hmm, exactly. It's like, you gotta take it with a grain of salt and say, you know, screw it. I got no choice. Mm hmm. Yeah. Nah. It's always <laughs> interesting. Wow, that is really interesting. Huh. I like that. Yeah. I really like that. It gets me up out of bed every day. <laughs> no yeah, excuses. Just... No sorry. <laughs> Get the fuck out of bed, Karina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I do. Like, even I'm sitting here in my bed, I'm like, should I get up? I'm like, I have no excuse. I have to get up. Because mm -hmm. I, I have to get up. I got to eat something. I smell food. I'm like... No excuse, I have to go eat. Yep. <laughs> That's my excuse, get up and go get food. Mm -hmm. the, the best the best role model, food, go get it, it. Yes, oh my god, food is, you tell me there's gonna be food there, I'll be there, like. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's like, what, what's for dinner today? You know, filet mignon and cheeseburgers. I'm like, okay, you got my interest, let's do this. It's funny because my boyfriend was like, hey, I know it's your birthday on the 22nd, but my family's making tamales. I'm like, we're gonna make tamales on my birthday? <gasps> Fuck yeah, <laughs> oh my God, yes. This is the best birthday present ever. Oh, and that is like, amazing. Oh, that was the opposite of that reaction. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're gonna make tamales for your birthday. <laughs> That's cool, That's cool. I remember, I think it was uh, when Ian and I, it was our birthday almost the same time. Ian was like, Christina, do you want to make a cake? I'm like, 
Okay, I never made a cake, but I will do the best tart I can. Yep. I've never made tamales, and I'm the worst cook, but I'm sh I'm with his whole family, so I'm like, they'll make the tamales good. I'll eat their tamales. <laughs> exactly, but you also got to learn how it works and, you exactly. know, how it's made. So it's something very mm -hmm. new, very interesting. And it's like, one thing I tell even, like, Ian and some of my friends, don't be afraid to try something new. Exactly. You will learn something new out of it, whether you I mean, like it or if, not. It, that's one of the things that, like, um, you know, people that want to become an actor, like, they're they're like, well, I'm afraid because I've never done it before. And I'm like, then that should encourage you more to do it. Because let's say, let's say you don't even want to do this, like, as a job. Just doing it for community. Like, I had the most fun as a kid in community theater. And I still have friends that still do community. From, from my, and myself as a kid, they still do community theater at that theater to this day yeah. and they even said look I, we knew you were going places Karina you wanted to do this as a job but I always like doing this at home with my community for fun and that's what they wanted to do and you know what there's nothing wrong with that you can do acting as a hobby um and respect it and and I, I went and saw them like last year, actually, my old community theater and watched oh, their wow. play. And I recognized, oh my gosh, that's my friend from when we were eight years old. They're still Whoa, doing this. Wow. Um, but it's because they love it, but they just don't have the passion to make it a career, which is fine. But yeah. had they not taken the leap into, well, let's just try this, they would have never found that out. Exactly. And even like for me, because... Like me personally, what I've gone up against, kind of similar scenario. Mm -hmm. I've gone up against a lot of things. But um, one thing I learned throughout the whole entire time, I'm like, you know what? Stuff happens mm -hmm. and I have no choice. I have to keep going. I have to keep trying. Yeah. And, and if trying I, new things kind of helps you figure out what you're even interested in exactly and not just that it could help build up who you really are mm -hmm. especially if you're going into a very creative field like acting or art or right. something in that genre and without trying something you you never know where that inspiration will go and help mm -hmm. you develop more ideas for probably new characters or like new creations or just mm -hmm. god knows what yeah so just never be it helps afraid you to grow try. as a person exactly that too it's tremendously helps like people don't realize that and i'm like watch kung fu panda you'll understand the scenario <laughs> <laughs> oh man so you've also done a lot of acting in your career was there a unique role or audition that you did felt that you were in your zone when aha moments were popping out like crazy um so there were a few instances with that because I, I, I have a 20 year long career. Like <laughs> that's the thing is that when people first get to know me, they're, they're like, Oh yeah, you seem to be just getting up and coming. I'm like, I've been acting for 20 years, like professionally. And they're like, wow. Oh, because yeah, exactly. I, was, I was never the big name. I was always like smaller characters or like, I, well, technically I was almost a big name in Seattle, but that doesn't count for LA. And that was oh, for wow. theater specifically. So that's, a, oh, wow. you know, yeah, so it's a different thing. But um, so 16 years old, I was in the play called The Pillow Man at the Act Theater in Seattle. And um, mind you, I had no lines throughout the whole show. <laughs> um, but my character played out what the main character, Katurian, um, his stories basically. My job was to play out the characters. Um, so I got to play a dead boy underneath a mattress. Wow. Um, this, this place play was very interesting. Uh, um, also it's written by Martin McDonough, who's my favorite play writer. Um, uh, but yeah, I got to play a boy that was stuck under a mattress, a girl who thought she was the second coming of Jesus. And then, okay. um, a little girl covered in green paint. Okay. That's interesting. And yeah, and if you go through the show, you actually understand why I act out those things, but my character never had any lines because I'm just acting out what the lead character was doing in his stories because he was a story writer. Uh -huh. um, and one of the things that I was working on at the time before I got the role was with my mentor, Gary Austin. Um, he was working on with me of not speaking. If you haven't noticed, I talk a lot. Um, but he was working on how he was like, it's funny when you don't talk, you are so engaging. And I was like, how does that work? That doesn't make any sense, Gary. You're crazy. <laughs> me being a little girl who was completely 
just oblivious to what he meant by that. But then when I was like going over it in my head and I went back to him even and I was like, what do, what do you actually mean? And he was like, because when you start to listen, you really listen to what's going on in the show or what's going on on stage. And I was like, huh. And he was like, honestly, I would challenge you next time we do an improv thing together of not speaking the entire time you're on stage, but still engaging. Oh, and wow. so I did that. And had I not gone through that, I actually probably wouldn't have gotten that second role of that character because my character is actually throughout the whole show. I'm three different characters. You see me throughout the whole play, um, but I have no lines. Hmm. And um, I've, I've learned in acting that even in voiceover, like I constantly get told this all the time with my teachers, I should be able to hear your eyes roll even though you're on a microphone. Wow. And that makes so much sense. So even though, even in voice acting, you're still using on camera or theater type things to kind of express what's going on. It's not just relying on your voice. Oh, wow. Um, Cause if you're physically not doing it, it's not gonna come through your voice anyway. That's right. And plus people don't see the recording, but no, they have to no, believe it don't. through the through the drawing. Exactly. So like, um, you know, that was just like a really profound moment for me and being like, oh my God, I cannot speak and I can still be captivating. What the fuck? Like, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, and then another one was with, uh, I think it was Dino Girl Galco when I was recording that the whole time. I just had so much fun on that show and um I I I love the character of Naoko. She she's just a little girl who loves poetry who just has a when she has a bad day she turns into a dinosaur. What's not to love? <laughs> um, that is actually pretty cool. Yeah, and then um I think uh, when I was Mizuki in I, the Somnium Files, uh, that was also like a major one for me because a lot of the things that Mizuki goes through, I've gone through in my real life. So I got to- Correlate kind of, it with each other. Exactly. And so, I mean, I really put my heart and soul into like all of those moments with Mizuki. Wow. And Mizuki is just 12 year old me. She's, she's a bitch and that's me. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, though. Like, the fact that certain characters and certain roles you could correlate some of your own personal experience into. I mean, that's the job in acting. It's funny when anybody's like, oh, I get to play another character. Like, the reason why I love acting is because I get to be a different person. You're never a different person. You're actually never a different person. You are exaggerated parts of yourself. Yeah. You are taking parts it. of yourself and you're exaggerating that part of it. You're never somebody else. All of those characters are you. Wow. Yeah. That's, and I wow. think when people finally realize that, they think their acting becomes better because then it becomes more real. Yeah, that's right. It's never, oh, I'm going to try and pretend I'm somebody else. We physically can't do that as humans. We are, Humans are the worst at empathy. Empathy yeah. is not our thing. We have no idea what it's like to be somebody else. We have no idea anything. We can try and imagine, but even that's hard for us to do unless we actually experience it. Yeah. But if you now think of acting as, oh, it's an extension of a part of me, then your acting becomes real. Then it becomes amazingly better. Wow. I, I'm actually kind of blown away by just yeah. even hearing that. Because <laughs> I think when we met, I was actually cosplaying, actually, funny yeah, enough. Yeah, you were. I was cosplaying. Oh, shoot. Who was I cosplaying at that time? Shoot. But wouldn't you say as a cosplayer, like, you make the outfit, you put your heart and soul in that outfit. You're not necessarily being a different character when you're cosplaying. You're an extension of yourself as that character, aren't you? In a way, yeah, yeah. I do agree. But the funny part is, like... Some the funny thing I learned about cosplaying, it's gonna sound a little bit interesting. Mm -hmm. People choose characters that they find themselves in. Like for exactly. example, one of the characters I cosplay as is uh, Little Yugi from the, the Yu-Gi-Oh series out of mm -hmm. all the characters in the world. And people are like, oh, why not? you look so tall and this and that. But I'm like, the problem is I don't relate to all the other characters. The only character I relate to best is actually this character. Right. Because he actually, is one of the nicest characters and the fact that like he knows how to be kind and also like show mm -hmm. i'm sorry but also even though he's a kid he is a strong kid 
Yeah. And he has, I'm going to say, he has gone through quite a lot, especially watching the whole Yu-Gi-Oh! series. I'm like, yeah, you got through a lot, kid. Jesus Christ. Well, and also, Yu-Gi-Oh! at the time is smarter than Pharaoh. Yeah. No <laughs> kidding at that time. Yu-Gi-Oh! at the time is like, hey, Pharaoh, what if we did this? And Pharaoh's like, exactly. I don't think that's going to work. And then Yu-Gi's like, what? Just try it, bruh. Just try, then, bruh. Just try. Just try you try never it. know. And then it works. And then even Pharaoh's like, you're right, Yugi. Without you, I would be nothing. And it's like, see, Pharaoh much. doesn't do shit. <laughs> Pretty much. And what makes it, I think what I honestly, what kind of made that character more special to me, I will say it, is the final episode with Yami <laughs> versus little Yugi, where you really see little Yugi's character finally grow. And I'm like, yeah, that's why I like it. Like that's, I don't. Like, that's I don't, the thing we we look at these characters and we always want to see ourselves because that's who humans empathize. Is that exactly. oh I see myself in you. See again another reason why humans are bad at empathizing. <laughs> we have to see ourselves in a character to really yeah empathize. pretty much. But that's the way it is. So then then you choose to cosplay that character usually because of that. So that's absolutely true. You're yeah. never you're never somebody else. You're always a part of you. Exactly. Like like I said, everybody has that one character held three characters they relate to the most mm -hmm. and that becomes like their thing and like but it's always funny to me when i see these cute girls in real life that are like really happy go lucky and then they really cosplay dark and scary yeah, characters and I I'm like that. that's because secretly you're like that in real life yeah exactly mm -hmm. like i've seen that's, so many girls it's like that 100 percent true every time it is like it's so scary knowing that because like some of my friends they wear like the skimpiest cosplays i'm mm -hmm. sorry to say this out loud but I sit there and I'm like, you're such a nice person. Why do you do this to yourself? And it's because they like that. Because it's the one time that they can be free and be themselves almost. And In it's a way, acceptable. yeah. It is. And I'm just like, but it's so cold outside. Why do you do this? Oh, it's not cold. It's LA. <laughs> I'm if from Seattle. Raining. It ain't cold here. Nah. Okay, Seattle it is rained cool. yesterday and I was like, it yes. actually for past few days. My I God. love it. I love it too. Like I'm, I'm a sucker for the rain, but oh my gosh, I'm like, too much is too much, guys. <laughs> no, this is perfect. Keep it raining. It actually is. Keep we raining, actually need LA. it. We actually need the rain, sadly. Please, we, really we, we desperately need it. Please. <laughs> Please bring us the rain from the other coast. We will gladly take it for a few weeks. You guys mm -hmm. could have our sunshine for a bit. Please. Yep. <laughs> oh Lord. But, oh, man, that that's just cool. Because now that makes me think a lot more about when I do cosplaying stuff. Man! <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so, you've had a lot of challenges and obstacles in your life. How did you manage your acting career when facing adversary, advers adversity financially or health-wise? Um, luckily, financially, my parents do help me out a lot. I would not be here without them. They um, understand my situation. Um, and for those of you that, <laughs> right. And for those that don't know, I um, I got diagnosed with Crohn's disease at the age of 16. Wow. Um, I've almost died from it three times. Uh, I had wow. a foot of my colon removed from it. I also um, have arthritis because of it. Um, I, I deal with all of the... Uh, type of so basically the main the main types of um stuff that i deal with is like uh i get joints that become inflamed for no reason oh wow. um i get uh, i throw up all the time diarrhea mm -hmm. uh then also the fatigue is the worst honestly i'm like i can deal with all the other things it's the days where i like i'm, I'm just drained and um as a working actor that can be really rough because you're using so much energy behind the mic and you need it um and there's only so much caffeine in the world. Uh, <laughs> and so it, it's it's a lot of um, making sure that I am staying as healthy as I can, taking the medication that I need. But even with that medication, it's still hard. But again, it's that it's the whole mentality of no excuses, no sorry. Get your get your butt up there. Yeah. Um, and because if I become unreliable, I can't do my job anymore. Yeah. And um, and this is what I want to do. And I'm I'm willing to sacrifice. A I've I have sacrificed a lot for my job um, and so yeah uh, so I mean I try to pay for what I can but in the um, and I try to twitch stream to pay for what I can um, and when I really 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 need it my parents will try to chip in oh wow yeah but again it's because they know I'm a special circumstance yeah it makes total sense wow mm -hmm. 
That's actually wow. But like with the health situation from just hearing your story and stuff, mm -hmm. um what was your biggest obstacle when you were trying to like overcome it doing all these kind of jobs? I think the biggest one was how do I deal with physical pain while acting so I don't sound like I'm in physical pain? Yeah. <laughs> Um, that one sucked the most. Um, and luckily when you go through it your whole life and, uh, you kind of already get like when you have an invisible disease and anybody who has an autoimmune disorder or if it's an invisible disease knows what I'm talking about, you kind of get used to acting like you're okay. Yeah. Um, just so that you don't cause a big scene or just so that you can get through something and then right after be like, okay, I need to go to the hospital. Um, yeah. Uh, and so it's just been a lot of taking classes, even though I was, I probably should have went to the hospital instead and waiting until after, um, to go. Yeah. Um, and it sucks to say, but it's just about dealing with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um and just waiting till the last possible moment yeah but keep in mind guys whoever's listening if you're in serious serious please go pain, to the hospital please yeah, please don't do what i do that's i i i'm also at the point in my um disability where i can recognize when it's to the point of no i really need to go now yeah um like uh, again you have to know your body you have to know um what your points of limits yeah. yes your points of limits and being like okay how bad is this right now is it hospital bad mm, eh, i think i can survive a few more hours before i need to go versus nope i need to call and cancel this needs to happen now <laughs> yeah especially when it's like something very serious please just just mm -hmm. please don't 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 know your hurt body. your body don't hurt your body it's your only temple that you guys have don't mm -hmm. ruin it yeah and, and just I've, and just know it really well yeah memorize memorize the little parts like your joints your chest your head shoulders knees and toes you know mm -hmm. memorize and know your limits and just don't hurt yourself guys yeah. please you're you're worth it your life is worth it just don't hurt yourself please please <laughs> please please because it's it's a really big deal a yeah. really big deal um were there any mentors or people in your life that influences your thought process when it comes to acting? Yes. Uh, Gary Austin, I already mentioned. Um, he is now unfortunately deceased, but he was one of the, um, uh, he was one of the original um, creators of the Groundlings in LA. Oh, wow. Um, and at the Groundlings, you can actually see a plaque on the wall that has his name on it as a founder. Um, uh, he was a huge influence on a lot that what I do. Uh, Richard Lee Leadley was my first acting coach. Um, he lives up in Seattle, actually. Nice. Um, and he taught me how to cry on cue. <laughs> um, wow. And uh, uh, currently, one of my favorites is uh, Charlie Adler. He specifically, I mean, like, he's all through the 90s, you heard his voice. And even now, you still hear his voice everywhere. He directs a lot, too, now. Um, and uh, I'm currently working with a, a Mary Elizabeth McGlenn. Um, so she's kind of become somewhat of a mentor because I took a class with her. And now I'm working on a project with her currently. And, wow. Uh, so it's really awesome to... Um, also, it's like, you always need, like, some sort of, um, I always say, like, uh, it's important to have views from everybody. Like, uh, you should always have a good, diverse set of mentors. You know, women, men, uh, people of color, um, people of different um, gender orientation, people of different, like, you know, all of it. So that way you can get really, because everybody has everything that can come to the table and kind of, as an actor, you almost make your own version of your own acting style. And it's because you're taking little bits and pieces from all your mentors and putting it all together. Um, oh, and then also uh, Michelle Ruff has become a mentor of mine as well. She's an amazing uh, woman and an amazing actor. And um, she's kind of been really good about, you know, helping me when I needed it. Wow. Yeah. That's 
Wow, that's actually really cool. Knowing that you have like all these people to help you out. Yeah, that's you fantastic. should always have multiple mentors. Like, it's always funny to me when somebody's like, oh, I have one mentor. And I'm like, why? Like, there's so many, like you can get good bits of information from like so many people and they're all valid. And also what's going to work for you? Like, so not everything might work for one teacher, but one thing they say might work. And then you take one thing from another teacher. And then, the, and then as I said, it like comes into your own type of acting style huh that's yeah that's true mm -hmm. because you're taking influence from everybody exactly and i mean like i was told from like my first acting coach richard leadley take classes from as many professional people as you can they mm. all have valid acting techniques they very all true do. very true yeah wow um i'm actually like Wow, that's actually really cool, knowing that, like, mm -hmm. it's not just one person, but, like, multiple people. That's, yeah. that's cool. Wow. That's, I well, like that. Because there's also, there's not one way into the industry. I, uh, everybody has their own story of how they became an actor. So, like, having multiple different people, like, give their input, it also helps you kind of guide your way. True. Which is your own way. Very true. Very, very true. Yeah, I mean, even, like, Ian tells me all of his stories and stuff, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, Ian, that's a lot of people. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that's on purpose. Yeah. It helps him grow to become better to what he mm -hmm. wants to do and stuff. And exactly. it totally makes sense. It makes absolute sense. Yeah. <laughs> now that I think more and more, I'm like, geez, that's a lot. Even yeah. for me, I'm like, wow. Just, just, wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. So... Moving to Los Angeles to pursue acting can be a challenge. When do you think people who are thinking about this career and want to make the move to LA should take this chance? Um, when you truly know that this is what you want to do. When you really think about it and, and say, uh, I, I'm willing to sacrifice everything to do this. Um, making the move is a big step. You should save a lot of money before you move out here. Um, but it, it this needs to be something that if you don't do it it will crush you for the rest of your life if you don't yeah. at least try if you don't at least try like you know yeah you might not make it but if you don't at least try like then then it will be the greatest regret of your life you need to know that um, it, it's like the it. it's like the risk and reward factor mm -hmm. exact yeah. but you also need to know that you know maybe maybe i won't make it but if i don't you know what i'm still gonna do community theater no matter what like that should be like, your goal is to be an actor. True. Very true. Especially when it's one of those really big deal ones. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's not just Hollywood that has it, you guys. Hollywood, even though it's the capital for movies and stuff, there's other places that you can shine too. You can, yeah. There's, um, uh, Texas is a great place to get a start with Funimation. You know? Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, they have the headquarters over there. And also, you can even get your start online. Uh, Kira um, Buckland, who uh, um, is a huge actor out here, she um, has a Discord server called the VAC, the Voice Acting Club. And they put on their Discord server a lot of um, legitimate um, auditions for video games that are looking for indie artists. And so you can get your start even outside of LA. Oh, um, wow. So if you really want to see if you got the takes, maybe see if you book a few roles that are already paying. And then you can be like okay cool i've kind of booked here and there for indie game stuff maybe i can book for bigger stuff you know and that can kind of be how you gauge it so that way you're not automatically going to los angeles with nothing on your resume yeah at least you'll have something on there to show people saying yeah i did something mm -hmm. exactly wow huh that makes total sense what is a typical busy day like for you Ooh, I just had those uh, this last Friday. So this last <laughs> Friday, I was originally um, planned for one session. It turned into three sessions. Whoa. Um, now, I was at my, f oh, and then like five auditions on top of it. One of them <laughs> that I almost missed um, entirely because my agent told me, hey, this is due at 9 a.m. I woke up late, though. So I emailed her really fast, and I was like, any way I could get this to you at the end of the day or like after the session because I don't have anything after the session. And she was like, yeah, sure. And then she contacts me as I'm in the session. And luckily I was on a break so I could like message her really fast. And they were like, so they need you in for this thing that you're currently working on. Uh, can you make it? Because a different actor like had to um, reschedule. And I was like, oh, um, yeah, 
technically yes i'm just not gonna get that audition done can i get it done after that session and she's like yeah so then i made it to the second session and then as i'm at that session she's like you're never gonna believe it and i'm like what and she's like i another actor bowed out on another thing that you're working on and they want to know if you can come in right after this one and i'm like well i have enough time to at least get food and, <laughs> and then they were like um uh they said that tell them what you want because they'll just feed you. And I was like, oh, then I'm definitely going. Like, <laughs> oh man, that that thank God for food, you know, food right, solves they, everything. But they needed to get started right away, so I was like, yeah. I I need to eat at some point today, please, um, because I also because I was running late, I didn't have breakfast, so mm. I was like, no, I I I need to eat or else I'm gonna die. And then yeah. on top of it, I was like, so about that audition that I missed this morning, and she's like, just do it after, you're fine. And I was like, thank God. <laughs> Thank God for food. <laughs> and and so, yeah, I, I did three sessions that whole day, which wasn't planned. It was only supposed to be one. And then on top of it, I had to do the audition that I missed. And then as I was out, you know, you get a um, call from your agent that says, hey, this is due tonight. And I'm like, cool, I'll get that to you tonight. <laughs> awesome. And then going home, recording all your auditions, and then final. oh, I think I even streamed that day too, Oof. which, why did I do that? Good yeah. job shooting myself in the face, but, you know, whatever, I'll do it. And then I passed out. Yeah. <laughs> so, that was my day Friday. Wow, that that's insane. Yeah. Oh, Lord. So, you're just constantly being contacted almost every day for oh, something yeah. new? For something. Wow, that's but that's good. That's where you kind of want to be. Where it's like, okay, yeah. I don't have time to sit down. That I mean, it's it's worse when you're sitting at home, being like, oh god, I haven't booked anything in a month. God, no. Yeah, because <laughs> you my need the money. Over? Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you need the money to like pay rent, get food, yeah. electricity, and all that all stuff. All of it. Yeah. Wow. That. Good lord, that's insane. Yeah. Good lord, I'm <laughs> sitting here just thinking what Ian's gonna deal with in the future, and I'm like. Oh, yeah, it's, it's that nuts. It's it's funny because like, you know, my boyfriend's a sound engineer. So he's a freelancer like me. And um, I think that's a good thing is that when we're both freelancers, we understand like, hey, so remember when we said you're going to say we're going to meet up for lunch? That's not yeah. happening anymore. I have to take this job and being like really understanding be like, okay, yeah, that's fine. Don't yeah, go money. take the job. Yeah, exactly. yeah, we that's need it. Important. Please. That's way more important. I'll see you later tonight. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> we'll get dinner later. Just go. Just go make yeah. money. <laughs> No, I know that feeling too well. Even like some of the situations Ian is in, I'm like, Ian, go make the money. Don't worry about it, dude. We'll hang out sometime soon. Just, just go, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> You'll need it more than you think. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, really? It's like, yes, Ian, yes. But no, it's actually really interesting knowing like how the busy day is like for a voice actress because it's like not often people will even ask that kind of question. So right. it's kind of interesting. Seeing, yeah, like you have to be all over the place. It's like, no, I gotta do this. Next thing you know, five minutes later, gotta do this. Well, Next you also know. have to think of, okay, can I make it there from point A to point B in Los Angeles when we're known for having traffic? Like, especially I, around five o'clock. Oof. Oh yeah, it's it's the worst. So it's like, okay, can uh, am I going to be late for that session that they just called me in for? Luckily, they are. Uh, if they're calling you in last minute, they're uh, they're very understanding. At that yeah. point, they're like, no, if you're thirty minutes late, that's fine. We can make it work. You're coming in last minute. That's fine. Yeah, pretty you much. You know, they're yeah. yeah. So <laughs> that's the good thing. Yeah, I mean, at least people in LA can be understanding, but at the same time. LA traffic. Don't oh deal boy. with it. <laughs> no, it's so bad. It's horrible. It's horrible. Oh, man. But since you are a voice actress, do you have a favorite character that you have voiced? And if so, why? Um, so I have three. Ooh. Um, and uh, it's it's Naoko from Dino Girl Galgo. Obviously, Tornado from One Punch Man, because duh. And She's also, cool. um, Mizuki from I, the Somnium Files. Um, all for different reasons. Uh, Tornado is just me in real life currently. Mizuki was my 12 year old self. And then Galgo is like just such a fun show to work on Susie who's the director is a really fun director to work with um so the whole time you know we're talking about what's going on in this crazy anime that has this girl that turns into a dinosaur she has an alien that's in love with her and is stalking her and oh, then, Lord. um she has a neighbor who loves seeing her in her dinosaur form so he's constantly annoying her played by Bryce Mappenbrook by the way um <laughs> <laughs> and then the love of her, the person that she's in love with um is is this guy who runs a crow tech shop 
and um, he's voiced by Johnny Young Bosch. So nice. I mean, like, it, it's a crazy anime, and it's it's adorable and cute, and also it's one of those shows that, like, okay, it's technically meant for kids, but I'm enjoying this as an adult. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually really cool. Knowing that, like, there's an anime that you enjoyed, especially when you're working on, it's like mm-hmm. this is actually really funny. Well, and that was another reason why I liked working on all of them was like the directors make such a huge difference on whether you're going to have on fun on a show because that's who you're talking to and like really exploring the characters like Christian on One Punch Man. Um, I even like, you know, the last episode that I think Tornado showed up on, uh, Smile Man is talking to her and she's like, I don't want to hear it. And um, I was like, wait, did I just yell at you, Christian? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, awesome. I get to yell at you. <laughs> So I'm yelling at my director's character, which is oh, just man. kind of like me yelling at Christian. It's great. Um, and then for I, the Somnium Files, like uh, the director was Chris Faea, and he's such a cool laid back dude that I could literally just be like, wait, what? That's bullshit. And he's like, yeah, that's bullshit. Why are we doing that? And I'm like, see, you get it. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. See, it's always, it's always cool when you can work with someone. Like, it's always amazing. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a great time to like, really like every director works differently. And yeah. I mean, even now, like, as I said, I was mentioned that I work with Mary Elizabeth and um, she's also like, just someone that like, we really play around with voices a lot because I'm, the show that i'm currently working on with her i voice multiple i'm basically the utility actor i voice every character i can on that show and so i'm not a lead character i'm i'm all the background characters (laughs) all of them almost and um so we get to have a fun time really exploring what my voice can do and so it's almost like i have my own personal vocal coach while being paid Oh, wow. That's actually pretty funny <laughs> Which, and cool. When Mary wow. Elizabeth gets to, like, really be like, try doing this with your voice. And I'm like, oh, that turned out cool. And she's like, yeah, that's the character. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's actually really cool. Do you have, like, a favorite voice that you like doing a lot? Um, I like voicing – mostly I do like voicing children. And just because children – um, I, I – children, A, they speak their mind, which me, I'm, like, perfect because that's what I do. Yeah. Um, they're very unfiltered they're very much like this is what i want i'm just gonna say it and i don't care about the consequences yeah pretty (laughs) much (laughs) and um also uh i i find that i identify more with the feelings of of a child because again they're just unfiltered so they're very honest with their feelings and very um forthright with all of that and as a person i mean like i guess i grew up wrong as an adult because i'm i'm a very unfiltered it might also be the autism, but you know, that's neither here nor there. there. Um, <laughs> um, but you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very straightforward, even if it might hurt your feelings, but to, yeah. for, for me, it's like, it hurts my feelings more when you lie to me. I'd rather have exactly. the bad news and be upset about that. than you lie to me. And then I no, I don't like that. So I'm a very yeah. straightforward about everything. And so like, I like voicing kids because I feel like I identify with that a lot. Yeah, I know that too well. Like, I even tell my friends, look, I'm blunt and to the point. If you like it, if you don't like it, I don't care. You're going to hear it one way or another. Uh, You know, and I've always said to myself, like, as an actor, like, I'd much rather have people respect me as an actor than be my friend. Exactly. And, you know, we get constantly caught up with, do they like me? Do they like me? Do they like, especially as an actor, you get caught up with, do they like me? And it's like, that's the wrong question. The question, the right question is, do they respect you? That's the big question. They don't have to like you to respect you. I don't care if you like me. Just respect what I do and respect me and all that. And then we're good. Yeah. If you like me, that's a bonus. <laughs> exactly. It's always a bonus as if you like me. But no, if this famous saying I even tell some people, if you respect me, I'll respect you. If you don't exactly. respect me, I ain't going to respect you. Simple and then I won't that. even like you. So like, then you get both. You don't get my respect and I don't like you. So exactly. at least get my respect. At least. Get the respect <laughs> first. That's more important, you know? Yeah. Oh, man. (laughs) It's kind of funny how we think like that. That's funny. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Nah, because, I mean, like you said, children, children are like, you know, we're to the point where it's like, man, children are too honest. It's kind of (laughs) scary. But I love, I love honesty. Like, the best part about being around my niece is how honest she is. And, and because she's only, she's four. So I'm like, I love asking her questions because I know that whatever she says is going to be so funny because it's just flat out blunt, nothing filtered. Yeah. And it's amazing. And I love every second of it. (laughs) That's amazing. It's always, it's always good to hear the opinion, especially of a child, because you Mm -hmm. know, the most blunt and straightforward thing you're going to ever hear on planet earth. Yeah. 
Like I know, I know I don't have to play games with her. Exactly. Even though it's like, you know, you could do like some voice acting and she'll be like, I like it. I don't like it. It's like, you're I honest. Think the, the best part was she now knows that I am a voice actor. She now gets it. But first was when um, she showed, it, it was you who to the rescue and my sister was showing her the episode that I was on. And um, my sister goes to my niece, um, that's your aunt Karina. And she goes, no, that's a hippo mom. <laughs> I was oh, like, that's man. the best reaction that could ever happen. And she gets it now that I play the voice of the yeah. hippo, but just that honest, like, immediately, co- immediate comeback of, you're stupid. Like, that's yeah. a hippo. Like, I'm, I was like, that's perfect. Don't change that's anything. Amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. Good Lord. Just, just be innocent, child. Don't change. Don't change, <laughs> ever. <laughs> Oh man, I love when they do that. It's always funny. Like they point out the obvious, and it's yeah, like, and it's like oh, uh, they're kind of right. <laughs> yeah, that is true. They that's they, the funny they, part. they are technically correct. I can't argue with that. <laughs> oh, that's that's funny. Oh my god, I love it when people do that. It's always funny. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> no, mom, she's not a hippo. It's like, yeah. oh. it's like, oh lord, that's funny. God, that that's just. Oh man, that's funny. So, what have you read or listened to recently that inspired you? Um, this is going to be really weird, but yeah. BTS has inspired me. <laughs> Everybody loves them. Everybody loves them. I know. I, I, it's, it's actually, K-pop in general has inspired me. I don't know why. I love listening to it. I also love listening to stuff like Dance Gavin Dance and Screaming for, or like, uh, Sleeping with Sirens. But like, There you go. <laughs> It's, I, I don't know what it was. I think it was just at a really down time in my life. And then all of a sudden, like, I, I started listening to Big Bang. And I was like, they're amazing. I need all their songs. What's yeah. going on with me? And then um, uh, KG Tang's sister, uh, KG Tang is a voice actor. And his sister introduced me to BTS. And oh, so wow. if you want to blame anyone for my obsession, blame her. It's Catherine <laughs> Tang. <laughs> um, I love you, Catherine. Uh, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, I I kind of like became obsessed with them and like weirdly that kind of inspired me to just like no you got this all their songs are meant for you even though logically I know that's not true but I can pretend <laughs> damn it and all their songs are meant for you and it's to push you forward and it got me through like the weirdest like low point in my life where I was like really BTS got me out you know what fuck it BTS got me out of a low point damn it and I don't care who knows like <laughs> Hey, I mean, a lot of my friends listen to BTS, and I have heard them a few times, and I'm like, their rhythm is really good. It's really, like, you know, upbeat and oh, really and good pace. It's awesome. And then they even have some, like, like I actually think it was, because when Catherine Tang introduced me to BTS, they had just come out with the song Mic Drop, and that was the song that did it for me. Because oh, wow. their song basically said, I was really upset about a lot of different things, um, and one of them had to do with dealing with some jerk who was uh, I was dating who um, emotionally abused me at the time. Mm. And then... I just dumped him. It was like really recent. And then she oh, wow. shows me this song. And the song is based, Mic Drop is basically about how they played at the um, Billboard Music Awards. And basically, all uh, a lot of the response was, Why is a Korean group at the Billboard Music Awards yeah. gross? And I was like, Wow, I'd write a song about that too, which basically the song is saying, Oh, you have a problem with that? Too bad. We're amazing. Fuck you all. We're going to take our trophies home. Oh, we have too many trophies. We can't even count. Like, and it's amazing. And I like, yes, that's what I need in my life. That's what I needed right there, right now to deal with this emotionally abusive douchebag. I needed to hear this song. (laughs) You you needed that mic drop, you know? (laughs) Exactly. I needed the mic drop. I needed it. (laughs) Wow, Wow, that's cool. No, yeah. I mean, it, it does represent a lot of things, just like not just with emotional abuse, because I actually have had that kind of scenario mm-hmm. before with the same thing and X and all that stuff. And um, sometimes it's like, you know, I need to just screw it, you know, just mic drop out of here, you know. So exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, man, that's cool. I mean, I was always told by my mom, like, because I, I was made fun of terribly all through high, high school, junior high, uh, like, all of it. I was the weird kid. Everybody told me I didn't have a chance in hell of being an actor, that I should just quit. And when I think back on it, I was like, I was a working actor at eight years old. I was already getting paid to do this. 
why did I listen to them ever? Like yeah. I had nights where I would cry to my mom and, and, and you know what she said to me, honestly, and this is also something that inspired me too, but it was a long time ago, not recently, which was the best revenge is succeeding. Yep. The best revenge is succeeding. I've lived by that logic since day one. I don't do anything to that person at all. I just succeed and that's my revenge. Yeah, pretty much. Because then they can look back at me and be like, why the fuck did I do that? That was Why dumb. did I mess with them? Yeah, and like, exactly. honestly, the best part about it is like when high school, uh, you know, people now like come to me and like, how'd you become an actor? And I'm like, I was already an actor when you were making fun of me, dick. Like, get out. Yeah, exactly. Stop messaging my Facebook. Yeah. I've seen I've seen people tell me those like that kind of scenario and I'm like mm -hmm. the funny part is I'm kinda in the same boat, but I'm yeah. like, you know, I, I wanna work in the video game industry, mainly doing like the character designs and all that. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here like a lot of people have, you know, same thing picked on me since elementary, you know, high school and whatever. And I'm mm -hmm. sitting here like, my revenge is when I get my name in a video game. That's Yep. That's all I can say. And if yep. people don't like it, then, you know, I'm done. But I want to make video games because not just to make people happy, but to show, yeah, I got there. What I okay? got there. Exactly. You Mike can't dropped. hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, you know, here's my mic drop. There dropped. You go. Exactly. It's like, I got there. You have no right to hurt me when I got there. You mm -hmm. had no right to hurt me like that. But, you yeah. know, there you go. You see my name well, in it. Because bottom line is those people that are hurting you, like, they need to hurt you to feel better about themselves. Yeah. And that is such a disgusting, manipulative, gross thing. And I don't know what's going on in their personal life that makes them want to do that, but nothing excuses that. I like, I don't, I, I have no sympathy for people that do that. You know, you could give me the saddest story of, oh, you know, they, they dealt with this their whole life. And I'm like, that's no excuse to then be abusive to somebody else. No excuse, no, no sorry. If they're dealing with that, they need to go get therapy. Yeah. Okay. That's called being a responsible human yeah. being. Well, and understanding that just because you're going through shit does not give you an excuse to treat somebody else like shit. Yeah. No excuse to treat people like dirt because mm -hmm. people have feelings. People gone through hell. People are facing their and own. And another reason why humans are really bad at empathy. Yeah. Like, if we were good at empathy, this wouldn't be a problem. Yeah. If we were good at empathy, we would be like, you know, I'm going through a lot right now. So wait, if I treat this person like an asshole, then I, they're going to go through the same thing I'm going through right now. But that's not the thought process at all. It's I feel bad. So I'm going to make you feel bad. So yeah. I can feel better. Like, no, humans Don't are terrible at empathy. Yeah. Humans just suck at it. <laughs> And it's very tough. Like, I even some people, you know, they tell me the whole world, and I'm sitting here like, I feel sorry for you. I understand you're going through a lot right now, but holy smokes, calm down. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just not an excuse to abuse somebody else. Yeah. It's just not. It never is. It never will be. It's not. Honestly, it's not fair for people to do that. And it's mm -hmm. honestly really not right, because that's what leads to a lot of problems we have today, actually. Exactly. Exactly. And people need to learn that, like, don't hurt people. Just please don't. Just do, like, what Mr. Rogers say at times, you know, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Just mm -hmm. be nice, please. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on, guys. You learn how to be nice when you're a kid. You love everybody. Don't don't change that. Yeah. I mean, that's the one thing you got to remember when you're a child. Just love everybody and just have a good day in the neighborhood, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> God. So... What do you wish you had known when you became an actor? Um, I think... I wish I would have known that it would have all been worth it. If that makes sense. Like, if I could have known what the future entailed. Because you, like, when you first decide to do this crazy dream of becoming an actor, you have so many people that, like, tell you, like, this is a bad idea. I have people currently telling me this is a bad idea currently and i'm like what wow. okay sure sure jan um <laughs> but bottom line is like i i wish somebody would have told me that hey you're going to be in one punch man when you're older you're going to do this you're gonna succeed at this yeah um and mind you, I had my mom telling me that, but she didn't have any proof. <laughs> like, I wish somebody came from the future and said, I have proof of you succeeding. Here it is. Yeah, so you can exactly. tell everybody to shut the fuck up. <laughs>
No, I know that because even like, yeah, exactly. Because it's actually normal. Like when I started out doing drawing and stuff, I'm like, mm -hmm. I wish I knew what the future would hold. Like, would yeah. I get to my goal? Would I see my dream? Yeah, you know but I mean? that's also part of the process is that you don't know and you just gotta yeah. go for it. <laughs> no excuses, no sorry. No gotta, excuses, no sorry. Gotta just keep on trucking. That's mm -hmm. all you can do. And it's tough. It's tough being an actor or being an artist. It's a very tough road. It's just tough being a freelancer. Yeah. Like, uh, like I know so many people that are freelancers in multiple different things of arts of all different forms. Um, and, and yeah, it's rough, but keep in it. You'll get Gotta better. keep trucking. <laughs> Gotta keep trucking. Yeah. And that's the famous saying everybody's saying, just keep going, guys. Keep going. It's like, how are you so nice to me that you keep saying that? Mm -hmm. Why? It's like, because we see the good in you. I'm like, I feel special. Yep. <laughs> just that special teardrop moment. It's like, oh, I do have something there for me. Okay. I'll keep trying. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. <laughs> What are the best resources that have helped you along the way becoming what you are? Um, having my multiple different mentors and having mentors that are currently working in the industry. I say this multiple times. Make sure whatever teacher you get as an actor, they are somebody that's currently working as an actor or as a director or as a casting director. Because anybody that worked 20 years ago doesn't know what they're talking about anymore. There's a reason why they haven't worked since. Um, I'm just, I'm honest about that because I can't tell you how many times like somebody has got uh, or is in a class with me and then they've said, but my teacher, my last teacher told me to do this and then my current teacher will be like, who was that? Well, when this was the last time they worked, that's the reason why we don't do that anymore. It's bad. So then yeah. they have to get out of the, all these bad habits. Um, the same thing goes for like, every time somebody tells me that they're going to get a theater degree, I'm like, oh, which college, which school? If that college or school is not known for their acting um, majors, do not Definitely. take that course yeah. ever. I literally had, a, I, I have, I do teach myself and I had a student that tr uh, that tried to be like, well, you know, we had two people um, from my school who became actors. And I'm like, really? What did they work on? Um, well, they're on Broadway. And I'm like, okay, what roles? Ensemble. And I'm like, so they're dancers. Yes. And I'm like, so were they dancers before they entered in your college program? Yes. That's why. There you go. Exactly. They were dancers way before they entered in your college acting program. That d no, that's, they're dancers. They work as dancers. They're not actual actors. It's a very big difference. Yeah. And, and, and then he was like, okay, I get your point. And I'm like, yeah, you, they, they, they're teaching you bad. And, and sure enough, I've had to unteach bad habits. Yikes. Because they're teaching them old, like, so for example, I've been doing this for 20 years. I do not act the same way I did 20 years ago. Yeah. There's, I wouldn't work if I acted the same way we did, I did 20 years ago. I wouldn't work if I acted the same way, like, if, for example, Audrey Hepburn is considered one of the best actresses on the planet, right? But if we acted like that currently in our movies, the way we, like, they used to do, we would be told how fake we were. Yeah, that's right. Those movies are looked on because that was the style back then. That was the style of acting back then. It was a style. That's right. And that means it's still good, but we don't act like that anymore. So Not in 2019. We, we, yeah. So why are you why are you getting acting advice from 20 years ago? No. You need somebody currently working because that yeah. means they know what's working now. Period. Exactly. Like, <laughs> like, okay, relating to the bad habits, what's the most common bad habit you have encountered when you're, like, teaching Ooh. and stuff? So for some reason, when somebody starts acting, all of a sudden they do this really bad transatlantic accent. And I'm like, that was not the voice you started when, okay, stop. When we're talking one-on-one, -on -one, you don't sound like that. Yeah. So why all of a sudden do you change the way you sound when you act? Oh, do I do that? They have no idea they're doing it. And I'm like, wait, you've taken acting classes before and no teacher told you you did this? See? Proof that your acting coach was terrible. If wow. they're not pointing that out, if they're not pointing out, you sound different when you start acting. Your job as an actor is to sound natural. So yeah. how are they not pointing that out? That's wow. Biggest number one habit is to, uh, every single time I'm acting all of a sudden. I'm like, stop. Oh my God, stop. Just be natural. Just talk like a human being. 
Like, go, don't, don't try to act. Don't try to have feelings. Just talk like a human being for like, that's your first job. <laughs> like, wow. let's get that situated. That's insane. Wow. Cause I remember. Or, they, or the, one of the bigger ones is, and this is always bothers me is that they talk like they think dubbers should talk. Like they, they talk like they think uh, anime dubbers talk. And I'm like, mm, stop, ooh, stop, mm, mm. Because it's always over-exaggerated to like the 10th degree. And the reason why dubbers talk the way they do is because we have to match flaps. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's not done on purpose. Like notice how a any anime dubber, they sound completely different when we are doing original animation or video games. And that's because we don't have to match flaps. Yeah. But so if it's, it's not like, like we're a... trying to sound like that, but because anime, d like people who are interested in anime hear that, they then think, okay, well, that's how I have to sound. But then they overdo it. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Your goal is to still sound as natural as possible. The only reason why it changes the way you sound is because you're matching flaps. So stop. <laughs> uh -huh. So like when you do the anime dubbing, like for example, One Punch Man, mm -hmm. when you look at the character Tornado, do you have to try and like, um, do you I watch have to, the screen yeah. first? So and they have, and... what they do is they have a screen in front of you that's okay. really big and that's that's the anime in front of you. And then okay. you have a smaller screen that has your script. You have 0.5 seconds to memorize your line. Oh God. Because they're going right into the next line. You then have to look up at the screen. They're gonna show you the Japanese first. And luckily nowadays they have beeps to kind of beep you in at the right timing. In the nineties, you had to actually pay attention to the time codes. Whoa. Yeah, it was fucking nuts in the 90s, but That's now we have insane. beeps, so it'll go boop, 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 and then where the fourth boop would be, that's when you start. And so that, that, uh, we listen to it in Japanese first, and then we do one more pass where I'm actually doing it in English. Uh -huh. And you have to match the lip flaps of your character, meaning that, oh, my worst thing, I'm really bad with hitches. So a hitch is when there's a slight pause in the middle of the care uh, like what the character is saying because they stopped flapping their lips for a second and i suck at that because i don't do that in real life usually i i go through the whole thought before i stop or even if like you know like english is also 100 percent different than japanese and people always argue oh why aren't dubbers good as like the japanese and uh, because they're dubbing technically too and i'm like yeah but they're dubbing to what animators are already assuming is Finished. japanese yeah exactly it's japanese though it's japanese intended meaning that the lip flaps are meant for japanese speakers Lip flaps in anime are not meant for English speakers, which we now have to make work. Yeah, and it's tough. It's really tough. Also, timing in Japan is different. Yeah. Because the language is different. Very different, my God. And they speak differently than English people, or people that speak English do. So, like, um, and, and mind you, I've dubbed to an animation that was meant for English before. It's a billion times easier. Well, wouldn't it be a difference because you could actually see the lip movement with the words that you're trying to say in English compared to yeah, Japanese? Yeah, you're basically, um, so basically in, if I'm, if I'm dubbing to something that's meant for English, that means it was animated for English, right? Okay. So everything that the character is saying, you can lip read what they're saying. Yeah, that would make okay, sense. Okay, I know exactly where, which word goes where versus in Japanese because like it's a different language. It's not, you can't lip read that anymore. That makes sense. Wow. I don't know Japanese. Most voice and most dubbing um, dubbing actors don't know Japanese. Some of us do, and those of us that do say it doesn't help. <laughs> it really doesn't really? help. It actually throws wow. them off. Oh wow! Now for writing, it helps them for sure. Knowing Japanese really does help writers, but yeah, in dubbing, it usually they usually say it doesn't help because you actually have to ignore it. You, your job as a, as a, a dubber or a dubber is to listen. The reason why they have you listen to the Japanese is not to understand it. It's to get the emotion. Uh -huh. That's it. That's the only thing. And uh -huh. your job is also not a, not to copy the Japanese. Um. So it's always funny to me when somebody says they don't sound anything like the Japanese. Yeah, that's the point. Mind you, there are tons of people that watch subs and dubs. I'm one yeah. of those people. I Same. like it when the when the um, the English actor is different, because it's a different take. As long as it still fits the character. I exactly. It's the same, so, like, it's the same thing like uh, Japanese Yu-Gi-Oh versus, mm -hmm. you know, American Yu-Gi-Oh. American Yu-Gi-Oh, you have a good laugh out of it. But yeah. when you watch the Japanese one, you're like, 
Oh, okay. So you could see the similarities with at least the character personality through the voicing. Right. Huh. That's yeah. really interesting. Because you're still having your own take on the character. Exactly. If you were to copy the Japanese, then, like, it, it would just not be right. Yeah. <laughs> it would definitely not be right. <laughs> Especially if it's, like, so similar. It's, like, mm -hmm. can it's you guys be creepy. original? Yeah. Yeah, not just that, but it's not just creepy. It's just, like, this is really bizarre. Like, mm -hmm. where's the originality anymore? You guys have freedom. Where is it? <laughs> well, and that's the reason why, like, you know, we have our own... Like, so even if the... You could even compare lines. Like, yes, we're listening to the um, Japanese first. We're listening for the emotion. But we have might have our own take on that emotion. Uh-huh. Because we all express emotions differently. True. Very so true. it's always interesting to me to see the English actor versus the Japanese actor on how they did those emotions differently. They're both correct. They're both valid. They're just different. And as an actor, you should, like, if you want to become an actor especially, you should be studying that. I should, like, my, my coach always did this, um, uh, Richard always did this. He would give us all the same monologue in the class. And then he was like, okay, every single one of you should give me a different performance. Hmm. Because wow. we're all different. We all take the same script. We all interpret it differently. And sure enough, every single one of us had a completely different performance. That makes sense. Because I remember, I think it was when we met, it was during that one panel. I think mm -hmm. it was, um... You or I think it was you that picked me to go up on the stage and recite a line. I mm -hmm. forgot what the line was, but I tried and I'm like, whoa, this is weird. Mm -hmm. And then just seeing how everybody else reaction, it's like, wow, everybody's emotion is extremely different. Yeah. I remember. But that. it's all valid. It all worked. Exactly. And I'm like, huh. So that's what the difference between like dubbing and, you know, subbing. It's mainly through the emotion and how it's uh, perceived through the the animation dubbing and all that stuff yeah exactly wow. i mean that's why that's why we watch the same play over and over again but done by different people because different people are going to have a different take on it that's right like like we can sit there all day and be like oh this is my favorite uh, like I, I i love sweeney todd the musical i watch that's it good. all the time i love seeing it done by different people and um you know there there's there's a huge difference between Patty LaBelle's um, uh, version of uh, the character Mrs. Lovett versus the original which was done by oh god why can't i think of her name right now Angela Lansbury there's a huge difference they're both valid they're both freaking amazing exactly so, no yeah. that makes total sense so you given up so much information and we really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to even talk with us. Do you have any advice for our listeners when it comes to voice acting? Yes. Biggest one I can give you all day. It doesn't matter if you can do 50 billion voices if you don't know how to act. If, and here's the thing. I can tell you right now, I'm not that, bit, uh, that good as a utility actor. I can't do 50 billion voices, but I know how to act. And that's why I get hired. Nobody is going to hire somebody just because they didn't do 50 billion voices. See, Dee Bradley Baker is like one of the best voice actors in the planet and he's known for doing 50 billion voices, but even he will tell you, learn how to act. He would not be where he is right now if he did it. You see, uh, like one of the biggest things that I see is this trend of like a whole bunch of people on YouTube saying, look, I can do all the voices of Family Guy. But then I listen yeah. to it and I'm like, but you can't act. Yeah. You've missed the point. The reason why you're not booking anything as an actor is because, yay, yeah, you can do all of these voices. Can you act? Can you perform Shakespeare in that voice? Yeah. Can you sing in that voice? Can you, uh, one of the, um, Valerie Arem is another great teacher, great director um, at PCB. She says, can you, in that character voice, mimic a different character that you're talking to Whoa. as the original character? Which Whoa. I've had to do, by the way. It's freaking hard, but it I did it. It sounds tough. Wow. It sounds like, so wow. a, a simple voice is not the character. It's the acting that's the character. The voice should be, I tell my students this all the time. I'm like, lose the voice. Let's work on the acting. Okay, yeah. now you have the acting. Now add back in now the voice. Now add the voice, yeah. The voice is so easy. Voices are easy. Acting is hard. That's the difference. Anybody can change their voice. My dad can do it, and he's a pilot. 
There you go. <laughs> like my dad does voices all the time that he is not a good actor. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, seriously. Like, so anybody time somebody comes up to me and this is like a big pet peeve of mine and ooh, I know you mean well, but ooh, it's so cringe. Hey, I can do so many voices and I even can do some of your voices. Great. But can you, know you act? act? There's also, a one of the major things that I was told of when I first got into this business was you sound a lot like these few people. They're your competition. What's going to make you stand out? What's going to make you stand out is your acting. You can sound, there are so many people that sound alike in this business, but they all act differently. And that's the point. Uh huh. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Really interesting. Because it's, it's similar to cosplaying in a way. Mm -hmm. Very similar. Like, I see so many people cosplay. Like, for example, the most popular thing I remember, last convention, freak, I don't remember. But it was My Hero Academia. Mm -hmm. Everybody cosplaying Deku. That, yeah. that, that kid character. And I'm like, no one looks different. They all look the same. Yeah. And even just by how they're acting, and I'm like, they all still look the same. Nothing is standing out. Mm -hmm. And to me, personally, I'm like, in order to stand out, you got to, I'll put Have it this way. Have your own take on it. Not just your own take, but, like, put your spin on this character that, mm -hmm. like, how can you do it? I always like it when people cosplay um, a big character, but in an outfit that they're only seen in like once throughout the whole anime. Exactly, same here. I'm like, oh my god, you recognize that outfit? Yes. So that that's always what I like. Um, or or uh, well, JoJo cosplays are always there. Crazy, you go. But like, yeah. you know, every JoJo cosplayer has their own way of doing makeup for it. Because it's and, insane. <laughs> yeah, and it's pretty fantastic. Cause I remember, <laughs> I remember one cosplay. I, you know, same thing. I cosplayed Yugi, but I cosplayed one of the outfits from the Dark Side of Dimensions movie. Mm -hmm. No one recognized that outfit. <laughs> the only yeah. thing they recognized was the hair, because I'm like, the hair Duh. makes it more distinguished. Yeah. But the outfit, I'm surprised no one recognized. I'm like, yeah. he wore this outfit in the freaking mm -hmm. movie, mm -hmm. and it's like, wow, this is sad. This is sad. <laughs> and it's like, you know what? I don't care. At least people still recognize the character and they, you know, like what I did. And I'm like, eh, mm, ta-da. But I'm yeah. like, just, you know, acting as the character, but actually being myself at the same time because it's like, well, it's easy to relate. Mm -hmm. The other question I have, because, you know, how you say that acting is, you know, critical when you do voice acting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of in there. It's, but um, yeah, when you do, when you start off acting... Do you do, like, um, community theaters or improv clubs? Like, what's the best way to start? Like, doing um, I would say the best way to start is community theater, just to see if this is truly something that you're interested in. Um, community theater is a great way to start, and it's f very affordable, if not free. Um because I know money is an issue for everybody. And then if you say, no, this is like, like you can kind of decide at community theater, like, do I want to do this just for fun? Yeah. Or so I shouldn't put any crazy amounts of money into this. Or you can decide, no, I want more. I want to do this for real. And then you can decide, okay, now I need to start getting the funds together so I can afford real teachers. Oh. And, um, so I mean like the goal is to like start out from there, see if you like it. And then, past that it would be get teachers that are currently working in the industry currently and there's a lot of options if you are not in LA I teach online if you're yeah. not in LA uh Still Steve, share. Bloom, Steve <laughs> Bloom teaches online if you're not in LA Aaron Fitzgerald teaches online if you're not in LA so there are options if you're not in LA and then when you finally can make the jump to LA you can then take more classes with people like um in person yeah in person uh with all of us who I just mentioned and also with Charlie Adler um, with Mary Elizabeth, with so many, uh, uh, Eric Bauza, I took a class with him. Um, yeah, like all of us. That's amazing. Like, cause I remember I was telling Ian a few times, cause him and I, we have a lot of conversations, funny enough, about like, you know, just acting and his life and a little bit mm -hmm. here and there. He's like, I don't know and all this. And I'm sitting here like, Ian, try community theater. I think you will really enjoy it. or try an improv club just to improve on like, you know, the comedic side a little bit too. Mm -hmm. and well, I'm like, and improv is always great anyway, because it really um, helps actually funny enough. I mean, if, if you're in a situation where um, 
like something's not really working, you can kind of be like, oh, well, I can say this instead. Does that work better? Exactly. Like you're, like, you're pretty much put on the spot, but in a way that's like, it helps you in a way. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's interesting. <laughs> I did. I've, I've done improv like a lot of my life. Gary Austin taught me improv from like when the age of 12. So like, Whoa. yeah. <laughs> nice. Do you do any improv club stuff? I was actually in the Groundlings for a while. Wow. Um, so I did do the Groundlings for a bit. That's Highly suggest wow. it. <laughs> There's also UCB. There's also um, uh, another one that I can't remember. Shit. I can't think of it right now. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's all good. It's all good. No, because I remember, like like I said, even I was talking to some of my friends, they also want to do voice acting. And I'm like, I hear a lot of voice actors say do community theater first mm -hmm. to get See the idea. See if you really want to do it. Yeah. And I hear that a lot. And some people, they're like, well, I can make the voices and stuff. I'm like, but nope, doesn't matter. Don't care. Act. Learn how you to have act. To act. Acting is so critical, too. Because mm -hmm. isn't it like also another interesting thing about voice acting? I, I, I kind of want seen it through youtube videos like through professional voice actors and stuff but um when you're in the booth do you actually act the yes. character like you know all the arm movements and this and that oh my and god i like a lot of us are very physical i'm a very physical actor of course basically you have to do what you can to not make any noises so any any um basically anything that would make noise you can't do and you can't touch the mic uh never touch the mic it's yeah, not yours. It, it, you didn't pay for it. Don't touch that, the mic. It picks up sound effects like the little boom mics and all that. It's like, yeah. you don't need that when you're editing. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, but yes, we all move. We all do it. Um, some of us even bring in props. Like, really? no, you, like, you're, uh, I know somebody, like, when he was doing a specific character, for some reason, it really helped him when he was holding a pencil and he used that as, like, his energy and moving around with the pencil. It, it was it's a real thing and it, because again remember i had an acting coach that said i should be able to hear you rolling your eyes yeah even though that makes no sounds it does I make should sense be able though. to hear that like if i went completely blank on the webcam and if i freaking like you know gave that emotion you have to hear it and actually mm -hmm. believe it exactly Man. and and so like and and this even goes on for if you're a professional singer like people can tell when you're smiling while you're singing the song even though they're not seeing your face because you could hear it through the voice like mm -hmm. you could hear their emotion like yeah remember, so if you're physically not in that state of mind you're don't do it just it's don't not do you're it. not gonna hear it yeah exactly like i remember i was watching oh what movie was it bohemian rhapsody with um yes I forgot his name. Rameek, when he played yes. the voice of, like, when he did Freddy, like, you could literally tell he embodied that character. And I'm like, oh, this got really interesting. Yeah, we all do that. If if it seems like a we have a character that has a hand on the hip all the time, usually yeah. the actor will automatically put their hand on like, the hip. Doom, there you go. Yeah, yep, exactly. It's right there because that's what their character does. Um, I, uh, for a lot of the Galco stuff, because it was a lot of yelling and stuff, so all of a sudden my arms were out and out and up and around all over the place, just like hers. So, <laughs> yeah, it really does make a difference. That's amazing. Wow. Because I, I, I always like listening to, like, these kind of stories. It's always mm -hmm. interesting because, obviously, I'm not a voice actress, but I really mm -hmm. love listening to this kind of stuff. Yeah. Really interesting. Wow. So when you, when you do your stuff, do you carry, like, a prop or something? Um, I haven't done that yet. I have used a pencil to, like, like if my character was holding something, it, like, there's always a pencil somewhere in the booth. So, yeah. like, um, if, I, if I really need to, I'll, like, pick up the pencil and I'll be like, this! Do you see this? And like, I'll use that to kind of help get the idea across or something or whatever my line is and that I'm trying to convey. Um, uh, so yeah, um, but I, cool. I move my hands around a lot. That's amazing, wow. Like, it, it's just, I don't know, it's just really interesting knowing that. That is really interesting, wow. So down to my final question, where can a listener, where can our listeners find you on social media? It's very easy. All of my social media is spelled exactly the same way. It's always yes. Karina Betger. That's C-O-R-I-N-A-B-O-E-T-T-G-E-R. -E -T -T -E so if you go on Instagram, you just at Karina Betger or Twitter at Karina Betger. Um, you can also find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Karina Betger. That's where you can find me. I can, I'll definitely put all the links to where you can find her in the description below because life is easier like that. Yay! Yay! And it gives me something to do to work on. Yeah! <laughs>
but I'm really happy that you have taken the time out of your schedule to even do this interview. This truly means a lot to us. Like, Of course. Oh my God, it's just so interesting just knowing how voice acting works. And mm -hmm. the fact, I'll say it this way, this is our first voice actress on this podcast. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. <laughs> Surprise! Yay! No, it's actually really cool. I'm going to have a silly request, I think. Yeah. Would you like to sign off on our podcast with like one of the voices that you do? Oh, okay. Um, hold on. I have to think of legally who I can do <laughs> really fast. It could be even, you could do Tornado. I mean, everybody yeah, knows Yeah, I think I can do man. Tornado. Um, thank you for listening to our podcast. Not that you would care, Class B nerds. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, good? God, I love it. Oh my God, I love it. Like, as a nerd a little bit, that actually, I love that. <laughs> Oh, man. Thank you so much. Like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And for those listening, this is going to be posted on Friday the 13th out of all the days in the world. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so I really hope you guys have enjoyed this special for this month. We will come back with another special next Friday. I don't know when that will be, but next Friday we will try and have another cool special guest with us. So with that said and stone, I hope to see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.